Those that live in death are considered abominations to the Golden Order, and are treated as such by the denizens of the lands between. Few feel for the plight of these souls that refuse to rest, even though their current state is likely no fault of their own. Upon the death of Godwin the Golden Soul, Deathroot found its way into this world through the roots of the Great Tree, and those that were touched by it found new life in death. Fia and Roger saw the truth in this, and decided to fight on behalf of these poor souls. But as we know from experience, those that live in death are quite good at fighting for themselves, even if they rarely come with numbers large enough to prove any true challenge to our tarnished. With that said, there are certain battles where we face a larger group of those that live in death, due to their heeding of a call from the ferrymen themselves, the Tibia Mariners. Today we will be examining these creatures that call upon those that live in death, and exploring what their true motivation may be. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Elden Lore. If this is your first time visiting us, thank you for checking out our ongoing lore series. With over 100 episodes in our playlist, we're confident we can answer any questions you may have about the Lands Between, at least until Shadow of the Earth Tree drops this June. If you're looking for background info on a topic we haven't covered, just let us know and we'll look into it for you. At the end of this video, if you've learned anything, or like our way of telling these stories, please consider subscribing to the channel. It goes a long way in helping us stay relevant in YouTube's algorithm and we'd really appreciate it. We also have a Discord, where you can talk to other FromSoft fans about your favorite Elden Ring lore and theories. Also, until April 23rd, you can enter our 50k subscriber giveaway by following the link in the description below. Winners will be chosen on the cutoff date, so try your luck. With that said, let's get back to the story at hand. The Tibia Mariners await you in areas where they can easily summon the dead to fight on their behalf with the use of their large horn. They ride in spectral boats, never really leaving them, and can only fight you off by swinging their large horn or pushing you back using the water below them. These are not particularly difficult enemies to face, but their ability to throw wave after wave of those who live in death at us, while they teleport out of melee range, does add a level of difficulty to these encounters. And I believe it also sheds some light on their actual purpose in the Lands Between. While there is no written lore directly discussing who the Mariners are, or why they carry Deathroot, I believe through contextual clues we can flesh out their background. When it comes to their names, it would be easy to assume that the word tibia is referring to a shin bone, as these creatures are skeletal and a bone pun makes perfect sense, but I don't believe that's actually the case. There is a wind instrument originating from ancient Greece known as the aulos, or in Latin, the tibia. This instrument is significantly smaller than the horn we see the mariners wielding, but the fact that this wind instrument exists and shares its name with the mariner seems intentional. Especially when you consider that in an earlier version of the game, this enemy was previously known as the Bone Beckoner Mariner. This name seems much more literal and honestly more fitting than Tibia, unless you consider that it's not simply referring to a bone, but the instrument which calls the dead to his aid. Also, the theme of a ferryman guiding the dead is reminiscent of Charon, the ancient Greek psychopomp, who served the same purpose, further tying these enemies to Greek origins. Each of the Tibia Mariner field bosses we face drops a different set of ashes associated with those who live in death. Each of these summons gives us a little bit of information on the nature of those who live in death and their origins. The skeletal bandit ashes tell us, After the night of the plot, Deathroot appeared in the lands between and those who live in death soon followed. The skeletal militiamen ashes tell us, this is the grotesque fate of those who come in contact with Deathroot. Lastly, the tibia summons tell us something that I believe relates to the role of the mariners. The dead have long been left to wander. What they need is leadership. Many believe that this leadership, the true lord of those who live in death, is Godwin the Golden, the very source of Deathroot itself, and this would make sense, as Fia believes he will be their salvation, ultimately ending their persecution, and the Mariners each carry a piece of Deathroot on them, or rather, within them. 
When speaking to D, Hunter of the Dead, about the task he inherited from Garonk, he refers to it as weeding Deathroot. Not simply collecting or gathering, but weeding. Meaning that Deathroot found on enemies could need to be physically pulled from their bodies as you would weed a garden. This could mean that the Mariners themselves could not exist without the Deathroot that found its way into their bodies, reviving them from a long sleep. If Deathroot needs to be weeded from each Mariner, that would mean that they are working under the influence of Godwin's corpse, calling the dead back to life, or rather, undeath, in order to grow their ranks so that they may one day be in service to their lord. But I believe there's another possibility here, due to a Tibia Mariner we can do battle with in the mountaintops of giants. This particular Mariner does not drop spirit ashes along with his death route upon defeat, but rather, the Helfen Steeple. This sword is one of the most mysterious pieces of weaponry in Elden Ring due to its description. Great sword patterned after the Black Steeple of the Helfen, the lampwood which guides the dead of the spirit world. The lamplight is similar to grace in appearance, only it is said that it can only be seen by those who met their death in battle. If we consider why a Tibia Mariner would drop this weapon, it opens up new possibilities as to their origins. Obviously, their attachment to Deathroot ties them back to Godwin. However, these undead may be older than the Golden Order itself, hearkening back to the days when Ghost Flame was the preferred method of dealing with the dead in the Lands Between. This lamplight that the Helfen Steeple mentions is said to be similar to Grace in appearance, but that doesn't necessarily mean the light is golden. It could simply mean that those that met their death in battle see this light in the same way only our Tarnish can see the guidance of Grace. The Tibia Mariners cast a distinctive red glow when using their abilities and summoning the dead, and when those who live in death rise from the ground, they can be accompanied by red light. This could mean that the light of the Helfen, or rather its form of grace, is red as opposed to gold. This means that the Tibia Mariners have the ability to use this red light for themselves, in order to help guide those that fell in battle back from the dead, in order to serve whatever purpose the Mariner has in mind. I think it's important to consider that if the Helfen Steeple and this red guiding light existed long before the Rune of Death was removed from the Elden Ring, that those who live in death must have existed before then at some point as well. They're not simply a byproduct of the removal of the Rune of Death. They're their own people, who are now simply seen as heretics who've touched upon a flaw in the Golden Order. Another detail that ties the Tibia Mariners back to this guiding light can be seen just above their seat, at the top of their boats. Sitting high above them is a guiding lamplight, a beacon meant to guide the dead, and perhaps an additional piece of the puzzle when it comes to their ability to summon those who live in death. While this doesn't tell us anything new about the Helfen itself, it does provide more possibilities as to its influence in the Lands Between. Perhaps the death of Godwin is not the first time Deathroot found its way to the Lands Between. Perhaps it had its place long ago, before death was banished from the land. And perhaps the Tibia Mariners were resurrected now that a new source of Deathroot exists, as well as a new potential lord for their people to serve. None can say who the Tibia Mariners were in life. It would seem that those who live in death all died as warriors, given that they come back with weapon in hand ready to do battle. But the Mariners are different. They're adorned with fine jewelry, their clothes are more regal, and they sport long scraggly beards, unlike any of the other skeletons we do battle with. They don't truly carry a weapon, and utilize the red light of the Helfen to cast whatever magic allows them to summon the dead and raise their boats into the sky. They take on the classic appearance of a ferryman of the dead, reminiscent of Charon of Greek mythology, and in this way we know that the light of the Helfen must not have been limited to warriors. It must have had swords of its own, to gather those that died and lead them through its light. While the Tibia Mariners may now do their work on behalf of the corpse of Godwin the Golden, he's not the one who brought them back from the dead. The Mariners have a sacred duty in leading the dead by the light of their lampwood, and we can only hope that the mystery of their origins is further explored in Shadow of the Ur Tree. After all, 
There are still many who believe the foreboding tree we see in the Land of Shadows is the Helfin. And if that's the case, the history of those who live in death may truly be revealed. Come this June. Thank you for joining us for this exploration of the Tibia Mariners, the ferrymen of the dead across the lands between. Do you believe they serve the corpse of Godwin? Or is the spread of Deathroot simply awakened an ancient enemy of the Earth Tree? Do you believe Tibia refers to the leg bone or the wind instrument? Do these enemies lead the dead to their own ends, or are they simply wielding the lamplights of their boats to serve a greater purpose? Is the Helfin steeple directly tied to the Land of Shadows? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and set notifications to all so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We look forward to seeing you again for more. Elden Lore